Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Carlos Smith, and today I'm joined by Desmond Floyd, former Wake Forest Demon Dinkin, and Charlotte 49er. So, Des, how you been doing today? I'm doing good. I'm... That's good. Now, Des, I want to go back just a little bit. What made you choose Wake Forest? Because you had a chance to to visit uh, Kentucky, uh, offers from Maryland, and even the Steve Spurrier and the Marcus Lattimore, Jadavion Clowney era. What made you choose Wake Forest over them all? Uh, I think just overall academics. Coming out of high school, I was really big on making sure I got a good degree along with playing football. So choosing Wake Forest was a good decision for me because I could get good academics along with playing in the ACC. What was the biggest transition that you had to make from going from high school to the college level? The uh, biggest transition was really just being away from home, coming from a small town, going to college and being on your own, really having to depend on yourself and really the time management and all the things that come along with playing football. Right. So during your time there, you went from two different coaches. How was it? Was it diff difficult losing one coach and then going to another coach, or did it, was it like a smooth transition for you? Uh, it was kind of difficult at first, but as it went along, it got a little easier to transition. Once we got through spring football and stuff, the transition got better going into summer and into the fall camp. Okay, so you finished your four years at Wake, and then you graduated and you transferred to, to Charlotte 49. Yeah. What made you want to transfer? Why not stick it out there? Um, I think at the time when I was getting recruited by Wake Forest, Coach Brad Lambert, that was at Charlotte, the head coach there now, recruited me at Wake Forest. So I, did, I wanted to play a year with him in college. So I thought that it would be good to go down there and play with him and help him build a program down there in Charlotte. So after your last year with Charlotte, now what is your process like now? Trying to prepare when you were trying to prepare? Um, I, went in, I went to Virginia Beach and trained for a while and with Anthony Stringfield and um, First String Sports and then I came back and did my pro day at, at Charlotte and then I also did the local pro day with the Panthers and a couple CFL tryouts. And what were some of the things that they were, not necessarily knocks, but what kind of advice were they trying to tell you when you were trying to get ready for those teams? They just told me to keep working and just to keep made sure I stayed in shape and stayed ready. Now what scheme do you necessarily feel comfortable in playing on defense? Is it a particular scheme that you prefer or is it does it matter to you regardless? Uh, no, it really doesn't matter to me playing it with under Coach Grove, under Coach Clausen at Wake Forest and then under Coach Lambert at Charlotte. I played in different schemes so I'm kind of comfortable playing in any defensive scheme. Now I know you played on the defensive line and then I believe you moved to linebacker. Was that by choice or was it something that they necessarily wanted for you? Well, when, we're, when I was at, at Wake, I was a 3-4 defensive end originally and then my redshirt sophomore year, midway through the year, they moved me to 3-4 outside linebacker. So when, I, when the new coaches came in, the defensive end position that I played was kind of a hybrid type guy that could drop in the coverage and play defensive end. So when I went to Charlotte, I did basically the same thing. Okay. So since since everything has been going on after that, did you did you kind of get a feel that you may get drafted, or did you kind of have in your mind, okay, I might have to take the long road and not get drafted and try to work my way through, just get a call from a team and and go through that way, or did you kind of have in your mind that you may have still have a chance to get drafted? Well, I knew that that me not having the the big stats in college. I knew that I would it would be a long shot for me to get drafted, but I knew just depending on what I did on pro day. But I had already knew that I would probably end up having to take the long road, which would be going through the process of trying to get an opportunity in camps and things like that. So I kind of expected the worst okay. that happened. Did you watch any of the draft or how much of it did you? I watched bits and pieces of it. I, it was really kind of hard to watch yeah. it, so I just, I just, I watched a couple. Right. Couple. So how, how did it make you feel? Because you played against a lot of these guys, and not say, say, not not necessarily feeling like you deserve a better opportunity, or you feel much better, but you believe in your talents more. How did it make you feel seeing other guys get picked, and you sitting at home waiting for their opportunity? I knew, like when I seen some of those guys get picked, I knew that I could play at the same level that they did. They produced in college, so they they earned their their spot. I just really just wanted an opportunity, just wanted somebody to give me a chance. Right. 
did you feel like is there anything through your whole process that you feel like you maybe you wish you would have done differently or do you just accept everything for how it transpired for you I mean I kind of accept everything as it transpires and like with me I'm, I'm not giving up I didn't get a sh call yet but I'm not giving up okay so what's what's next for Desmond Floyd at this point um, maybe going to coaching for a year or so, keep training and give it a shot again next year. Or hopefully someone calls me before the season comes around. And the thing that I really appreciate more is that the conversation we had before was that you ended up having to come out of your own pocket and pay for some of your own things. Is that something you would advise? Because I feel like it's worth it if you want to invest in yourself. It's, it's absolutely one of the best things you can do is to absolutely invest in yourself because you believe in yourself that much. And if you don't believe in yourself, then why would anybody else do it? Would you advise other people to make their own investment and pay for their own things if that's what they uh, want to do? I believe that if there's something that you really want to do, you should invest in yourself because, like you just said, if you don't believe that you can do it, then you can't expect for someone else to believe that you can do it as well. And Des, I appreciate the time, man. Best of luck, and you know, just keep on grinding, man, and just keep chasing your dream because it's only a certain window that you can play football. It's always life after football, so man, just keep doing it, keep on grinding, and hopefully everything will work out for you. I really appreciate it. All right, no problem.